Amen, brothers. How y'all doing this evening? Praise oh, God. Oh, all right. I promise you I won't hold you long, but I definitely praise God through the prayer and the Holy Spirit. Make sure that word is going to be embedded in our souls. Like me and Pastor Kelly was talking about, you know, your the calling greater above you, above what you're doing, above in your life. One thing that I do want to emphasize, praise God, is that in our lives as men, we go through things physically, mentally. We, we have, sometimes we even get to a point where we're, when our lives are in what? Crisis. When we're in a crisis, praise God. And when you're in a crisis and you're going through, you're on the phone, you're calling everybody you know to come and help you. You get down on your knees and you pray to God. Every week, every month, every hour, year after year, you're praying either the same prayer or something relevant to the prayer. And the only answer that you wait on, you're waiting on the answer from God. And the only answer God gives you is to bow down. One of the hardest things for us men to do is to bow down. One of the hardest things for us to do, praise God, is to bow down because we are a stubborn type of people. Men, we're very stubborn. We don't necessarily want to listen to nobody. We don't even want to listen to God. And Lord knows if we're married and our wives are telling us, giving us some uh, points, we still don't want to listen to that. So we definitely are not going to bow unto God. We're a stubborn type of people. So what I want to do, this little sermon, my sermon topic for today, is that in a crisis, bow down to God. Amen. And I'm saying that to us because it's one of the hardest things to do is to keep men in the church is for us, for our hearts to get get that uh, chisel and knock off that hardness. Men, we always have to have the statue of that I'm the hardest, I'm the toughest, I'm the biggest, I don't cry, I don't weep, don't do this. No, you're supposed to have the emotions that God has given us. We're supposed to cry when it's necessary. We're supposed to have pain when it's necessary. I know we've all been taught, some of us are still teaching our children, oh, we ain't going to cry over that. But why not? If something in our emotional status that it needs to come out, that whether if it's pain, we need to cry about it. Whether we're feeling hurt, whether we're feeling uncomfortable, we need to express ourselves in the manner of feeling that God has given us. I'm not saying, oh, just cry about everything. No. But I'm talking about when you are in a crisis, where there ain't nobody with you. The Bible tells us that in midnight, at midnight, in your midnight hour, when there ain't nobody but you and God, you know you got every single authority, like my brother Will pointed out to us this evening, that you have every authority to go to God in prayer and weep. And we, so, like I said, I'm not going to hold you long, but I definitely, definitely want to get into this. Please turn to the book of Daniel, chapter 3. Turn to the book of Daniel, chapter 3. We're going to be at verse 12. And then I'm going to jump down to 16 and 18. Amen. Amen. Anybody have a Bible? When you have it, just say amen. Amen. I still to see some guys, but... We got it? All right. James chapter 3, verse 12. It says, There are certain Jews, Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the providence of, of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Now, I know some of us People that, brothers that stay in the word of God, we understand what these three brothers went through. 
But what I want to show us tonight is that in a crisis, you see how the world, the world tells us when you're in a crisis, praise God, oh, call somebody, call the suicide hotline if you're feeling like suicide. If you're feeling depressed, oh, you have to grab a pill. If you're feeling like like you need to weep and you have no shoulder to cry on, now they have, the, what, what, what was it called back some years ago, having a bromance. It's certain things, praise God, that we just need to disregard what the world says and focus on what God says. These three brothers, to give you a little history about these brothers here, is that these were three people that was captured by Nebuchadnezzar. Okay, they were Jews under Nebuchadnezzar, and they had refused, they refused to worship what Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar worshipped, which is the king. They wasn't going to mess with the images that the world set up. So when you are working hard and you don't get your don't get your paycheck, you ready to go fuss the boss out. Am I right? Because you know, look, I worked two weeks for that check. I worked a week for that check. But God says that I supply all the needs. You understand what I'm saying? We see. We get all bent out of shape when the world starts taking away from us. When the checks don't come in, praise God, let me put it this way. When the jobs don't come through, for those that are not working, when you get more refusals than you've gotten yeses, huh? And, and yet we still, we, we still, you know, we get our, put our backs to the wall, we get ourselves in the corner, and we Instead of us crying out, we lash out. But these three brothers didn't lash out. What they choose to do, they chose to serve God. Amen. You see that? See, us as brothers, this is what we have to learn to do. We have to learn not to lash out at each other, but we have to learn to serve God. For those that are that that are that even hearing this word for the first time. I want to repeat this to you. When your life is in a crisis, regardless if it's, if it's something from your past that's binding you, whether if it's a woman, whether if it's a drug, whether if it's something from your past or something from your childhood, understand that all you have to do is put yourself aside and say, I'm going to lean on the one who created me. Amen. And this is what these three brothers did. They leaned on the one who who created them? See, it's it's different when you can see this is this cup here. You can worship this cup. You can worship. This is what the world says. The world says this is your money. The money you have is empty. So without money, without finance, you have what? No life. Am I right? That's how the world puts it. Without money, you have no life. But spiritually, when you look at it through spiritual eyes, without Christ, there is no life. Amen. And these men, these Jews, chose to have life, like the word says, and life abundantly. Go down to uh, verse 16, please. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, y'all see that? Whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace. And we, he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. Just stop right there. When the king told these people, you need to worship my God. If you do not worship my God, if you don't worship my God, I shall put you to death. Is these brothers' life in a crisis right now? Nebuchadnezzar said, if you don't worship what I've made, I'm going to put you in a furnace. These three brothers. But what did the three brothers' response was very, very simple. He says that, I love this part. If it be so, it's like, even if you put me in this fire, if that's going to be your choice, our God whom we serve, you see how much faith and belief these brothers had? The God that we serve, the God that even created you, O Nebuchadnezzar, the God, 
The God that even created your situation in your life is what? The one that's going to deliver you. Mother, he didn't look. It didn't say, oh, mom and pop going to come. Right. It didn't say the brother or sister. They didn't say any of the soldiers were going to come. They didn't say none of their... But they said that the God that we serve, meaning that they already saw that the God that this man Nebuchadnezzar put together was a false God. It wasn't real. It wasn't. They knew that they that their God, Nebuchadnezzar's God, wasn't going to fulfill what they need. Same thing what happens when you deal in, 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 in drugs. You look for a feeling that's going to fulfill your need. Right. Same thing you look for when you look for into a woman. Here I go. You look for the feeling that's going to satisfy your need. Forgive me if it sounds a little bit vague, but I'm, I'm going to try to clean this up, Pastor. Come on, what you mean? At times in our lives, when we are in a crisis, when we're in a hard, tight spot, we try to look for the things that make us feel good. Whether it's good or bad, but what are we doing? Searching. And I want to just point out what these three brothers didn't have to do. They didn't have to search. They already knew what was going to satisfy their needs. They knew despite what this king is going to do to us, despite what the world may say about you, despite what your brothers and sisters may talk about you, despite what goes on in your life, you ought to know that God that you serve, that we all in this room serve today, is going to be the God that delivered you out of the hand of the enemy. Y'all, did y'all see that Nebuchadnezzar, the enemy here? Y'all see that? Because he, he, he took these boys and he threw them in the furnace. I'm going to go to verse 18. Because this is a very... The scripture made, got me excited. But if thou not be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy God, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. So despite, even if God don't show up, I'm still never going to worship any other God. Amen. Right. Because I know that won't nothing that you got for me will satisfy me. I know that right now I'm in a tight spot. I know that I'm put inside of this box. I know I can't fight my way out. I know I don't have any money. I know that I have to feed my family. But it's going to be God that supplies. Not me. I tell this to a lot of a lot of men, you know, who are unemployed, who are looking for jobs, who are who are actually trying their best to do the right thing. And I told an older brother of mine, I said, listen, God is the one that supplies it. If he didn't supply it, then we got to go out and find other means. Amen. Other means. Listen, your life in closing, your life may be in a crisis right now. And at the same time with me closing, I want you to know that there will never be any other God, any other thing on this earth to deliver you out of the hand of Satan but Jesus Christ himself. Amen. Along with that, you have to learn to surrender. See, the reason that God says to bow down is so that you can learn as a man to learn to surrender everything to him. Everything. Everything that is that you believe that is of you, that he's giving you, we need to learn to get on our knees and bow down. Surrender it. Surrender. We are the most stubbornest creature in the world. We are on this earth. We're the stubborn creature. You can tell a dog to sit, that dog will sit. Won't that dog sit? But somebody tell you to sit, you give that person a hard time. <laughs> When there's altar call and we call people up for prayer, why does it always seem like the men run out the back door? 
This is the day that the Lord has made. And we ought to learn to surrender in it. Meaning that we don't know what our day is going to bring when we make up. We all have an idea. Don't we have an idea? We have a, but your challenge with your idea is that will your idea come to fruition? Will it manifest itself? Will that happen? Not all the time. You wake up in the morning, God may set you on a different path than when you woke up in that morning to do. Learn to surrender. And God will answer your prayers. Pray my strength in the Lord. Amen. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the greatest of us all? The greatest, the greatest, the greatest. Jesus, the greatest.